The 6th Gen 4Runner is here. We are so excited and all of the features have been overwhelmingly good. Yeah, we've been stoked to see all of Toyota's teasing the new features that the 4Runner is going to have and we're finally able to check out all of these features. Um, so we're gonna go over a couple of the new things that the 4Runner has in today's video. Today we're gonna break down everything that's new about the 6th Gen 4Runner compared to the last generation. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing that we wanna start with is the design. The 2025 Foreigner has a completely new design from the ground up. It is on Toyota's new TNGF platform that is shared with the Tacoma, Foreigner, um, Sequoia, and Tundra. And they've re like designed everything on it. Dude, it is completely new. I love a ground up rebuild. I love a ground up redesign too. The 5th Gen Foreigner was stellar, but I think that this new Foreigner just takes us into the next generation. All right, so Toyota's kind of taken a couple of different design cues from a few different generations of the Foreigner. I know on the rear quarter panel glass that we see on the new one, it kind of has a curved design to it, which odes to the first and second gen Foreigners, which I think is a cool touch. For sure, I think one thing thing to notice about Toyota is that they pay attention to every detail. Every detail that comes on a new vehicle is for a reason. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the front end of this new 4Runner and how it kind of has two drop down, almost mustache looking mustache. things. Um, personally, I really like the new look. I like the look of the front. I love the look of the back. I think that this new 4Runner is everything that we had in the last generation but better yeah and i think that's controversial it is very controversial i know one thing i've seen a lot of is it kind of also looks like the fourth gen toyota foreigner which is not a popular foreigner um to foreigner fans but i think they just took different design cues from each generation of foreigner they put them together very well the front end is very like tacoma-esque mm -hmm. um on this new one which i personally love i think the front of the front end of the Tacoma looks great. And I think it looks awesome on the Forerunner. And we also got new lighting on the Forerunner, taillights and headlights. I did see that there was quite an uproar about not having the classic teardrop style fog lights that the previous generation had. But I think that this new fog light that they've been doing on all of their new models is superior in every way. Mm -hmm. The last generation, if you remember, are all halogen bulbs. That may be an ode to the last generation coming out in 2010 yeah, um, or whatever, but I think that this new LED update is exactly what we needed. Yeah, so we get two 10-inch LED light bars up front now, and then if you get the TRD Pro or the Trail Hunter Edition, you get that. I think it's a 30-inch light bar that counts as your high beam. We've seen that on the Tacoma, we've seen that on the Tundra and the Sequoia. And what an amazing thing that Toyota does for us with that. I mean, we all love to put auxiliary lighting on. Mm -hmm. There's the classic slogan, lights before lockers, and it's for a reason. Lighting looks so good. Not that I encourage that you do lights before lockers. That's true, otherwise you get stuck in the snow like Dawson did. <laughs> Some big news in the back end of the Forerunner though, is we still get the rear roll down window, which is an awesome touch. Honestly, my opinions on that will always be the same. I think that Toyota has a specific DNA and I think that their post when they said the roll down window is kind of our thing is 100% the best way to put it. This is Toyota. The roll down window is Toyota. I love it. It's not the most necessary thing in the world, I don't think, but I honestly love having that feature. Yeah, it's a great feature. More cars should have it. I think it'd be awesome to have in every model of the Toyota lineup. But there are a couple of other exterior goodies that we get on the new 4Runner. In the TRD Pro, you're gonna get, and the Trail Hunter, you're gonna get blacked out fender flares that are a little bit wider than stock. And then on the Trail Hunter, you also get sliders, a high air intake. Two and a half inch lift, and it comes stock with 33s. Mm -hmm. I'd like to touch to start on that big list of what we're gonna get. I'd like to start with the fender flares and the badging. Toyota has listened to us. We have finally got blacked out. Blacked Everything. out badges, blacked out fenders, blacked out bumpers. It's kind of a thing for uh, higher end Toyota models now to have black badging instead of chrome badging that we've seen in the past, which is an awesome touch. But yeah, overall, new Foreigner looks great. I love the taillights. I think that C shape looks really cool. It kind of reminds me of the Morimoto um, taillights that we sell. Um, and then the headlights have a really sweet DRL that has an amber um, in them, which is the first time we've seen that in a Toyota vehicle. So with the exterior of the new upper models, like the Trail Hunter and TRD Pro, we have a lot of features like skid plates and rock sliders and a snorkel and a roof rack. 
But my biggest question is, are those going to compare to aftermarket ones? Yeah, I think it just depends on what type of customer you are. If you want to just buy something straight from the factory that is capable of getting you out on the trails and exploring, Trail Hunter is a great option. If you do like building out your vehicle, maybe not get the Trail Hunter because then you're able to build it out just the way that you want it. Exactly, I think if you're wanting to build it out yourself, you go for something like a TRD off-road model, right? Something yeah. that you can take from the ground all the way up. Otherwise, you'll just be taking off parts and replacing them with similar things. So something that we did see on the Tacoma is you get the power lift tailgate. Something similar that they added to the Forerunner this year is a automatic hatch that opens and closes on its own. I think that that is something that car manufacturers have been doing for years and I've known that as a very popular feature on lots of SUVs, big ones and small ones. So I think that this is just under that same category of needed yeah. updates. Yeah, I agree. Cool new feature on the new Forerunner is we've gotten a couple of different color options, which I think these are the coolest color options I think we've gotten on a Forerunner to date. What are your thoughts? Honestly, I could not be more excited. Quicksand is back. It's back. Quicksand is back. Back with a different name. Yeah. But it's back, right? Yeah, it's that, called what now? Mud Bath. That Mud, mud bath, bath color is probably, will take the cake is my new favorite, like Toyota color. Although oh, underground is sure. pretty good too, but. Yeah, mud bath is sweet. And then we also got the emerald color on the Trail Hunter. I'm not a huge green fan. I love Toyota and they kick butt with their colors, but this one just isn't for me. I do like it. Ever since I saw it on their first teaser image, I think it's a really cool, like different color that they're trying. Obviously the, the mud color is pretty sweet too, but emerald is cool in my book. In the new Forerunner, we will be able to get the turbocharged four cylinder engine from the Toyota Tacoma as well as the iForce Max engine that produces 326 horsepower and 475 pound-feet of torque. It will share the exact same engine and transmission as the Tacoma and the Land Cruiser. Honestly, that is a huge improvement from the last generation. How are we gonna differentiate the Land Cruiser and the Forerunner? I think it's just kind of size and what people wanna do with each. I've driven the Tacoma. I haven't driven the iForce Max one yet just because it hasn't been officially released. But even that one has so much power compared to the last Tacoma yeah. that it's, I'm excited to see the iForce Max. Yeah, exactly. And Toyota engineers have come out and said that this is the most powerful engine that has been put into the Forerunner. So even more powerful than the V6, more powerful than the V8 that we saw on the fourth gen. So I'm excited to see how this engine does, um, especially the hybrid version. Like you said, we've driven the standard 2.4 liter turbo, but I've heard that hybrid just brings performance figures just way higher. So excited yeah. to see that. The new Forerunner came with a lot of new updated suspension and underneath the car features. One of the ones that I'm most excited about is a locking center differential. Yeah, so in some Forerunner uh, models, you'll get a center locking diff. You can also have a rear locking diff, and then you can also disconnect the sway bar when you're off-road, which kind of acts as a front diff lock. Um, you get that extra articulation to get some more grip. Perfect. I honestly am so relieved that we were able to get a few extra features like this. Mm -hmm. I think that with other companies providing front and rear lockers, Toyota has given us their version, and honestly, Toyota's version is usually the best. Yeah, I really like just having the rear locker. That's been plenty enough for me and my Tacoma. Um, something else that we are seeing in the new Foreigner is the option to have just two-wheel drive, um, part-time 4x4, so you'll get the transfer case between two high, four low, and four high, and then permanent all-wheel drive on like the Limited and the Platinum model. Yeah, I think that that is something that we saw on the Land Cruiser where it was just permanently all wheel drive mm. and that we're starting to see now transferring to the floor runner. So another thing that is getting carried over from the Toyota Tacoma is the eight speed automatic transmission that we've seen in the Tacoma. This should help with a couple of the gear hunting issues we've seen before. I'm personally so excited for that. Um, coming from the previous generation of Tacoma and taking it off-roading a lot, I've noticed a lot of gear hunting and in just the little time that we drove the new generation Tacoma, yeah. I could feel the shifts were a lot smoother. It'll help with that low end stuff that you need when you're crawling over something. Yeah, I'm really excited to see this uh, engine and transmission package in the Forerunner. I've loved it on the Tacoma. Everyone out there that hates that the V6 is gone, trust me, just drive it, it's awesome. It should be pretty reliable. This isn't Toyota's first time making a turbo four cylinder engine, so. For sure. I mean, one thing I can say about that is, I was so skeptical. I was definitely in the boat of why would you get rid of the naturally aspirated V6 and give me some four cylinder hybrid. It wasn't until I actually drove 
the car that I realized how much better it was for that platform. All right, so the new Toyota 4Runner also has a completely updated interior from the previous model. We get a lot more luxurious options in this 4Runner, um, starting with a 14 inch optional touchscreen. And that's what I'm most excited about. A lot of people call it like that, the huge iPad in your face and they don't like it, it's too bright or whatever. I think that this transferred over really well to the Tacoma and it'll do even better in the 4Runner. I am such a fan of a big display. Yeah, these digital screens have become kind of the rage these days in the automotive industry. And we also see that kind of move over to the gauge cluster now, which is now just one screen. I think that it gives you that, all the information you need in one place, um, I will say that an analog system is really classic <laughs> and it is really nice, but you do get that modern feel with this new single screen. Yeah, and like you said, you're able to have all of your information up at once. The new Foreigner has a lot of different drive modes and this gives you a place to see all of those drive modes, what they're doing at all times, which is a pretty awesome touch. Um, something else that we're also getting in the new Foreigner is updated seats. The updated seats are a needed upgrade. Yeah. On the previous <laughs> generation, there were companies that would sell little lifts to push the front of your car, the front of your seat up just a little bit. Um, I think with these new seats that are fully automatic and they're designed, they're designed to hold you in like a race car seat yeah. almost but also give you a lot of different controls for comfortability. Yeah, and we get a couple of different color options with those seats as well, don't we? Yeah, so we're gonna see it in a black leather, like usual. Which is my favorite. I love the black leather and the TRD Pro. I mean, you can't go wrong. That's honestly the classic. It's always been a staple, and that's why it will continue to be a staple. But I think my personal favorite is when we can get a brown leather brown interior. Nice. And that's gonna be something that will be available on the Platinum, which is a new trim, and the limited trim as well. So what is the Platinum? Is the Platinum compared to a Limited or is it compared to like premium models of previous generations or is this a whole new thing in and of itself? I think this is just another add-on to the Limited trim. Um, we're just gonna get a couple of more features like the caramel seats, I think. Third row seating will be an option as well, as well as a full-time all-wheel drive system, which in the other Forerunners is like either a transfer case or it's rear wheel drive. All right, a cool feature we are going to be seeing on the Trail Hunter edition of the Forerunner is yellow stitching throughout the interior on the leather seats. I think that it's kind of a silly move to make it yellow. Honestly, like the um, yellow. <laughs> I, I love yellow. I honestly would love to see a TRD Pro color in yellow. I just think that the yellow stitching, especially in an off-road focused model, is yeah. gonna get so dingy and so dirty so fast. Yeah, I guess we'll just have to see when it's out, but that is going to be an option on the Trail Hunter edition of the Forerunner. You also get a ton of more storage options on the new Foreigner. You will get Molly panels on the doors, like we saw on the Tacoma, as well as the center console and a center console grab handle for your passenger, which is a pretty cool touch. Yeah, I love their attention to detail by adding these new Molly panels. It's something that we had to install on the previous generation, but these little added storage options will be great. I've already seen people attach medical kits to their center console Molly bag. I think it just really takes this off-road oriented car and makes it even more efficient in the off-road industry. Speaking of making things more efficient, we did lose the manual transfer case that we got in the previous Forerunner. That's replaced with one straight out of the Tacoma where it's just a dial to switch between two wheel drive, four high and four low. We also get options for our crawl control, our multi-terrain select, and then sway bar disconnect and rear locker. That's something that I really wanted to touch on. Um, was the multi-terrain select. I feel like you don't really realize how much those do until you are actually in the off-road. Yeah. I remember hearing a story um, about a fifth gen 4Runner that got stuck to the axles in snow. They tried pulling, they tried max tracks, and it wasn't until they switched it into snow mode that it was able to pull yeah. itself out of the hole that it was in. This multi-terrain select is legit and it was legit on the previous generation, and that means that this new one is gonna be even better. When we move to the rear of the car, we find a lot of new features as well. One thing that's caused a spark of controversy is the way that the seats lay down. They don't really lay flush like they did on the previous generation. Um, personally, it's a little bit of a disappointment for me, but I know why Toyota had to do it. Yeah, so you have two different options with the new Foreigner, the hybrid iForce Max and the normal iForce engine. 
Um, the battery pack for the iForce Max does sit under that rear cargo area. So in the iForce Max version, it is going to be raised up a little bit more offline with the seats. And then in the normal iForce engine where there is no hybrid, you are gonna be lowering that a little bit more. So you'll have a little bit more room, but um, just a little feature that is kind of inconvenient, I would say. I think that it'll be quick. A lot of things that I've seen is that people say that they're not gonna be able to put their mattresses back there anymore, their inflatables, yeah. and sleep back there like they like. But I think honestly, it'll be really quick to have just slight adjustments from these companies to have mattresses and sleeping equipment that can fit back there yeah. easily. And you still get a lot of different storage capabilities. I've seen Molly panels in the back on just the sides of the new Forerunner, um, new little totes and areas you can fit things, which is cool. And then we also get in the Trail Hunter edition, a air compressor, which is awesome. That's so great. I mean, for anybody that's been off-roading, you know the difference that it makes from airing down on a trail than running at full PSI. Yeah. It is night and day difference. And right now, you either have to find a place and install a new compressor or carry a compressor with you, which can be kind of a hassle. Um, I love to see that they're giving us one built in. The new Forerunner will be offered in nine different trims. We don't know exactly what each trim is going to be, but we do know that it'll be ranged from SR5 all the way up to the top models like Trail Hunter and TRD Pro. We've had a few confirmations of Platinum and Limited. What do you think? Do you think we're gonna need nine trims? Um, I think nine is pretty excessive, but we've seen Toyota in the past fill out a ton of different trims. And I think it just shows the how they want this vehicle to be perfect for everybody, which is awesome. So we'll just have to see what trims Toyota has in store for us when we get more information. But we are so stoked on having the TRD Pro and especially the Trail Hunter addition to the Toyota 4Runner. I think that one thing Toyota has done with all of their vehicles is made a vehicle for a specific person. There will be the TRD Sport for sure. Yeah. There's gonna be the TRD Off-Road. It's just whatever type of life you live, Toyota's got a vehicle for you. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you guys think of the new 6th Gen 4Runner. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you love the new mud bath color? Do you love the new green color? What's your favorite? What are you most excited about? We really wanna know, we wanna know, get feedback from you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe and we'll catch you guys next time.